come up here and talk about uh, materials, really, but uh, one of our favorite materials is wood. Wood coming from, probably the most important thing is trees, and uh, we love trees so much with regards to their capacity of uh, making oxygen, taking in CO2, and just really the beauty of them and uh, their capabilities. Uh, this, this picture blows, blows both of our minds, but uh, we thought we'd share it. It's just the amazing thing about really trees and whatnot is the history of them and kind of uh, how much how much stories really are behind the life of the trees. And you can imagine what happens when the tree is taken down and it's just dissipated into a multitude of different objects and whatnot. What we have here is uh, just a bunch of uh, fir beams that were taken down in a building actually very close to us, uh, just uh, less than a kilometer from our shop. And these are these probably came from similar trees, not maybe as big as that behemoth uh, in the former slide, but uh, they all came from probably the west coast and uh, became much of the buildings that exist in uh, the city today, and they're all being torn down for developments and whatnot. And so it's just a, we see it as a very useful material, and we try to give it new life. This is a part of the process. The thing with working with reclaimed woods is just the amount of uh, effort it takes to work them. And, uh, you know, you need metal detectors uh, and a whole bunch of gumption just to make it uh, kind of happen. The, the nice thing about that, though, is that uh, they can become something new, they can become something different, and get a whole new story along the way. Uh, that elm right there is actually makes up the uh, the bar here, and as well as the uh, uh, large table, as well as there's a bunch of fur incorporated in here. Uh, numerous other elements actually were incorporated in this uh, restaurant that's not too far from here, including automotive parts. It was an old automotive uh, rebuild shop, and these are piston valves that uh, we had. Uh, the previous owner had collected them for the last 20 years. And so what we do is, when we come across an item similar to uh, the hoarders, uh, we like to try to come up with an idea uh, to just, you know, reuse this thing. There's so much energy already put into it, so much engineering and so much thought that uh, this should become something else. Uh, these are some things that we do with them, utilizing our offcuts from our uh, practice and then incorporating some of the found objects. Uh, this is part of our, we do something called the cut-ups where it's uh, really utilizing. Uh, pieces from all of the woodwork that we do and then incorporating the found objects. We had an amazing project earlier this year where we were, uh, it was about building a table, it was actually for the YMCA, a boardroom table that was meant to inspire and uh, what happened was is that uh, affiliates sent objects from all across the country that all had meaning and had stories to them and so we were sent all these different disparate objects, uh, things like uh, moose jaws and uh, all sorts of items. We were like, what, what are we going to do? We really didn't think we could do something, but <laughs> luckily they sent us some wood as well, so that became the uh, backbone of the table, and uh, including some like Douglas fir from a, from all the way from out west and uh, and whatnot. So we were able to piece these things together and, and create something again, just giving it new life and giving it a whole new story. As well as actually, uh, with regards to how we approach it, is that we try to use the entire uh, tree and everything about it. This is, a, this is a root that I came across. I had a customer who uh, asked for uh, a, an interesting base, and this was actually, this root is a sycamore tree from southern, uh, close to Lake Erie, and uh, it's a direct uh, result of, uh, of being um, soil, soil erosion and deforestation that's led to it being uh, uh, washed up into the river, and so we took it and uh, we just tried to find out what we could do with it, and uh, this is sort of the base we made mixed with uh, um, white oak that actually was salvaged out of Georgian Bay, uh, probably primary forests within Ontario that don't exist anymore. Again, this, uh, this tree just represents the, really the beauty of the tree and, uh, and uh, just the idea of just how much uh, uh, the chaos, the, the chaotic nature of how it grows and also the strength and, and the twisted branches and whatnot. And sometimes in woodworking it's not always uh, utilized in that way. We like to put things straight and make them just kind of go in one direction. Uh, these, these are, uh, well this, this gentleman here is a boat builder from Newfoundland and uh, when he goes out uh, he looks at a tree and he's, he tries to use the whole thing so the ribs from the boat are actually created from like the root of the tree and, it, and it, you follow the grain of it and cut it that way so that you get the most strength. And, uh, and that actually uh, leads into this. This is an ash tree that it, that's at Bathurst in Adelaide. and. Uh, this tree has to come down for various reasons, but um, apparently actually in Toronto, uh, 500,000 ash trees are going to have to come down. But the priest, I, I met the priest from this church, he went on to tell me, um, well we told him that we were going to use the whole tree, and he went on to tell me about how the boat builders in the Azores, where he's from, use the various uh, shapes as well. Uh, other things that we once came across, actually this is a, 
uh, the, uh, the priest that Jay was just referring to, uh, he was saying that he's just happy that the, the tree won't become firewood, unlike the people who threw away these beautiful shoe lasts and then put a sign here saying free firewood for the cottagers. Uh, we just couldn't believe that uh, when we were told about it. Actually, my father came across it on a fishing trip one day. And uh, so we thought, well, let's uh, take these objects that already have so much thought and so much uh, creativity put into them, as well as so much energy and, and craftsmanship that we would just create them into something different. Uh, this is us working a little bit with them. Uh, here's some uh, benches that we do out of the, the old shoe last. I mean, they're fun, they're whimsical. We try to create something that, again, just has a little bit of a story, just a little bit of life like, to it, and something fun. We made actually uh, probably uh, 50 plus objects out of these last lighting, uh, seating, uh, and, uh, even little bud vases. These, uh, this is another uh, sort of material stream that we see as a, a potential, uh, and uh, many churches are being deconsecrated and becoming condos and other shit. And uh, the uh, <laughs> Where this uh, one, there's right? tons of pews in them that uh, that uh, that are just a valuable material, and, and there's so much potential in them. This light fixture is actually be, being created uh, out of church pews, and uh, these uh, the elements here were uh, bent out of old church pews were found at the uh, at the site where uh, it's actually 40 oaks. It was already mentioned. Uh, please come next week to the opening. Uh, so these uh, we're making three of these light fixtures to be in the foyer there. So the light the actual light fixture was uh, taken from uh, the old church that was there, and uh, and then the the, the uh, components from the pews. This is uh, also just. Uh, Working uh, with actually, these are parts from a pew, but uh, the idea here is just to talk about where uh, this amazing project that we're part of uh, with a place called Story Planet, where we're uh, creating. A, it's actually a. Well, that goes really quick. Thank but, you. <laughs> it's a creative writing center for kids, and uh, we're going to build things like that there. Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you.